that's the lot. It's all there, tied up what there is of it. They can sort this place out for me until the kids come over and tidy up. There's not much for them, but no doubt they'll have had their eye on something. grow me marrows here, or plant spinach in the graveyard. Morning, men. place I fancied. There was a time I wanted it so much that I, I wouldn't work there. I resented it. And what would you have done with it, eh? <laughs> Let the grass grow. That's not gold, you old goat. It's a Spanish sardine tin. Give up all thoughts of wealth and keep walking. There is built into us in a queer kind of way an idea of how much travelling we can take or how much we should do, where to draw the line and say, I've seen enough of the world. And when you think of it, you should see every square foot if you can. All right, it repeats itself, but if you don't stay curious, you're missing your only chance to have a look. You stopped me, old mate, much too early. Oh, you've kept this journey for yourself. A one-day trip, that's all it is. When other people are talking about going to South America or Samarkand, you could have seen it all, but you stayed here and knew this place too well. And even that's not well enough. You might think you can guess at what it's like to stand in the snow in a Moscow winter, but you can never say now, I was there, or I spoke to this fella, here's what he said to me, or I took this canoe, I shot this rapid in Canada, <laughs> I brought down this buffalo bare-handed. <laughs> ah, you left yourself a short journey, me old mate. Let's hope you make it in style. What are you waiting for? You want it to happen now. See? Nothing. Just light-headed. But that's the pills. And all they do is to confuse the issue. You were born there, me old mate. And behind the screen, there's half a dozen rooms you know well. The rest are still a mystery. But I'll go back, if they ever find me. I did a deal for that ground, and I only hope that firm booking stands 
It was paid for. No more than I deserve. Here we are, standing on the greatest of private land. Watch your foot. Don't cough or you'll kill that dandelion. Hold your breath. Oh, you're making a dent. For God's sake, don't break wind. Remembering the old dictionary definition of a fart as an explosion between the legs. Oh, think of the damage you'd do. It's all a matter of timing. My guess is as good as anyone else's, I suppose. And having always been an impatient Alex, I find the waiting frustrating, so I must bring it on. This river's retired early, like me, me old mate. They'll give it a pension and tell it to slow down, put its feet up. Like they did the railway. <laughs> the three of us, all laid off. What's his hurry? Hey, all right, hold it, hold it. Gone. We have a way to go yet. As if by invitation. What are you doing here? What does it look like? I've chased you off here before, a few times. This is private land. What are you after? My father and before my son. He's well known round here, Mr. Gabitas. You know. You know, you know. You're trespassing. But lead is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. Is he here when he likes? Oh, this is just a put on. Hey! You know you're not supposed to be here, don't you? I told you before, stay away from here. There's enough notices. Oh, that I don't need teaching. Hey, stay where you are. Look, you out of my way, you louch. Now, watch it. I haven't got the time to stop talking to a stupid ass like like you, so why don't you piss about the road before I clout you? Careful, careful. Don't worry, Mr. Gabitas. It'll be a long time before he thinks of coming here again. You certainly showed him. Poor fellow's frightened out of his wits. How can they be sure that he's there? I haven't been opened up. It's pure guesswork. I'm as right as rain. I mean, look at that. Not a flicker with those two. But sit me down in front of the television and I go cockeyed. They could be wrong. What I need is to be doing things. Making the blood flow faster, keeping the organs working, that might clear it out. That doesn't sound like a miracle to me, it sounds like common sense, man. Caramba. Come out of there, you two! It's the rack of the Iron Maiden for both of you. Come on. Empty your pockets. We didn't know it was private. There's no sign. We just wandered up from the ticket water. Empty your pockets. Oh. Oh. Tuff, tuff. That's not cricket. No, it's fishing. Are you the bailiff, then? Yes, sir. I've got medals for it. Are you going to take our rods? Yes, and then sell you both into slavery. You're not the bailiff, honestly. <laughs> uh, you've had to work out for them, haven't you? It gave us a fright. <laughs> hey, there's a couple of range riders further up. Now, they'll be coming down here, I should think, so if I was you, I'd disappear. We thought there'd be no one around at this time of the morning. Oh, it's a crowded world. They tell me to get up at four o'clock in the morning to have a clear round on the golf course. Hey, don't you two be caddies when you grow up. Do you want a trout? No, I've always got my own. Come on, we'd better be off. Warriors, on the warpath. Do they have to invent the enemy? 
where are the battles for the young men to fight? What will they do with themselves, my old mate? <laughs> you never thought you'd last this long. Your father went at 26 on the man. His father went in his 30s, somewhere in South Africa against the Boers. <laughs> it felt as though you'd overstayed your welcome by 40. But you anticipated this disaster. It was no boat from the blue when the quack gave you his diagnosis. And his polite prediction. Don't read, he said. And that was the worst part. Don't read. You are coming to a public picnic spot which is holy ground. Keep your eye open for any house out silver left littered in the long grass. Here it was on several, oh, several Saturdays, with the gang all sweating from the dance, that you made a fool of yourself with various women. <laughs> if black should be erected, it should be here, and I'd choose the colour green. in the current, but never wet that way. I can smell the hair, all of them together. And the girl with the book teeth who was tough to kiss, so I married her for constant practice. <laughs> ah, I should have drunk more in those days, it would have made me bolder. And down there is a city. From here on, there are more straight lines. But I'll have to do some clambering like the old author who was chased to that bridge by the pack and died off the parapet into the river. And while the hounds were milling about and huntsmen were cursing, a train came over and did great slaughter. You need go no further if you can't stand the tension of wondering where you might end up after all this. In preparation for your visit, the generous engineers have blasted a special shaft straight down into hell. You can take a shortcut if you like. For an extra quid, they'll lower you down in a bucket in an asbestos suit. And all introductions to the personalities down there will be affected by the water board. <laughs> hey. hey, we had one drought. And for that, they've done this seven-mile tunnel. If we have two droughts, the next one should land us in Liverpool. <laughs> if I was a salmon, I wouldn't dare leap this way in case I landed up in Life Street. <laughs>
Now I'll tell you something, my old mate. For the first time today, I feel on my own. You know every street, you've been in every shop, you've drunk in every pub, but you're passing through like the train to Glasgow. Plenty of fun here. No stranger to the magistrate's court. And I regret to admit that there is one whore and one whore only in this town. And there have been occasions when in drink or despair that I found her full of allure. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> With a black beehive wig and a boiling piece of her body, she was mine for two pounds. Rising to five with inflation. This truly is the city of God. I salute thee. a house in the city of God. No one will live in it. An oriental doctor killed his wife and maid and cut them up in there. The blood still flows and his rope still swings. Some say England was unkind to him. The poor mad doctor, who never had a home, but that he found his bed full of Englishmen. <laughs> An empty house is better than a bad tenant, as I know, having just left one behind myself. Will people not live in that because I was there once? He'd have cured. That cook old quack would have cured me. Maybe with a cleaver. <laughs> and why do we gape at him? Ask Queen Victoria. She saw it all with eyes in the back of her head, and she said nothing. And you know why? The lover was giving her the wink from the town hall windows. As the darky doctor went out, the lover sauntered over and went in. And we all knew, didn't we? But we let him hang, mad, with no plea. Who make my excuses and who want to hear them? How about you, Doctor? In your empty house, you're always listening, diagnosing. Not long to live. Might as well. Not always at his best in summer. Can't stand the shock of high temperatures. There's a lot of drowning takes place here. With a full moon, a full wage packet, and a bit of late night bravado. <laughs> what do they think about drowning? What the water says on top is uh, not what it means underneath. The only reason fish don't drown is that fish don't drink. I could have tried it, though. I've been daft enough and felt the urge. 
<laughs> the last victim was a gypsy. <laughs> you worked down that road, my old mate, in the Lino factory. You came here for union meetings, my old mate, and drank too much and thought too little. And by the time you woke up to the fact that being a shop steward meant someone had actually given you a gram of power that kicked you out. Even with your reputation as a self-taught man who'd haunted the portals of the Workers' Education Association. The one job I should have had was driving the mobile landing library. That I was eminently suited for. sent that. Feed the birds, my mother used to say, and they'll pay you back on your washing. <laughs> You're not really tired. The bag of bones is tired, but not you, me old mate. Uh, this is the chasm. How can this meat be so beat up, so knackered now, and your brain is still singing? They say that using your mind doesn't consume calories. It's the fat executive's nightmare. So, where does the energy for the mind come from? If it doesn't fire off calories, it... <laughs> hey, I'm persuading myself very scientifically, I think, that the soul exists as a special source of energy to the mind. All this meat goes to one place, all the singing to another. Yeah, what do you say to that, my old mate? Extremely probable. No doubt about it. I'm convinced. Ah, there's the river. A shining light if you want one beyond the mud. <laughs> you know, you talk your way out of jail. You're all right. Fine. He looks a bit shaky coming along there. You're soaked. Well, I left it a bit late, but uh, I made it. I don't want to ruin my breeks or I'd risk it. Hmm? Do you live here? No. You're on holiday? Yes, you could say that. Aye. I come down every year for two weeks with a gang. They're over at the seaside bevying. They never stop. Do you mind if I join you? I get caught by the tide. Oh. 
You're holding that as if you don't know what to do with it. I don't. You don't smoke, do you? No, but I'm having a go, aren't I? I'm told uh, it can kill you. Oh, I think you'll find it'll take more than one. Sure you're OK? Oh, don't mind me. I should have taken this up. It's better than a blood clot. Where have you come from? I followed the river down from where I lived. It's a walk I've always meant to do, but uh, I've never got around to it until today. Is it far? It's about my limit now. Look at me. I've never walked a hill in my life. And you think, where I come from? It's crazy. I should be out there with my boots on, climbing to the top. All the time I'm saying to myself, I'll do this, I'll do that. Next year it's the Isle of Skye, Orkneys, the Hebrides, the North Pole. I'll explore. But two weeks a year, here I am on the Barbary Coast, bevy. Have you seen the delousing shed they had here for the slave trade? They used to anchor out there. You could hear them crying from here. Then they'd bring them in boats. See that tree? That's a cottonwood. All the way from America. One seed on one slave. And you get the right puff of wind and the right bit of earth and the right crack between the rocks. The right rain and the right sunshine. And bingo, you've got a tree. Look at it now. It's a great and fascinating place. <laughs>